Hello everybody, I'm Ralph. And I'm Daryl. And this is Community Time. Or whatever we decide to call it. What's up everybody? Today we're going to do a little video about some, uh, what I like to call, advanced basics. So we're going to look at some buttons and levers. And in this case, we're going to use it with a dispenser with a bucket of water. So you could build a farm that flushes stuff. Or it could be piston doors or whatever, you know. But we're going to look at uh, when you should use buttons, when you should use levers, and get out of here, horse. When buttons are good, when levers are good, and when you could, you know, use one to emulate the other or vice versa. So this, you know, with a dispenser bucket of water, it's quite simple. You push the button, water comes out. Push the button again, sucks the water back in. Right, so you have uh, a button to turn it on, to turn it off again. You have a lever, turning it on, it's the water out, turning it off, that's nothing. Turning it on again, sucks the water back in. So, uh, both of these are suboptimal in my opinion. What I would like is for the, when the lever turns on, water comes out. When the lever turns off, it sucks the water back in. And for the button to, you know, spit water out, and then suck it back in when you're done with the button. So we're going to look at some rising edge, falling edge stuff, and pulse extenders. So let's start with the first example. We want the lever to spit the water out, and then collect the water again when we turn the lever off. So I've already set up the basic thing we have here, but instead of putting the lever directly here, we're going to want to put a little bit of extra redstone Let's put the lever right here so we can flip it and watch what goes on. We'll put a little bit of redstone dust right here that will get turned on when we turn on the lever. I've got this uh, vanilla tweak. So check out the website. I'll put it in the description. You can see the redstone strength number right there, which is really useful. So the lever just turns on this redstone. And then what we'll do is we'll put an observer pointing at the redstone here. There we go. The observer saw the change of redstone, triggered the dispenser, and then we flip it off. The observer sees a change in redstone again and collects the water again. So it's triggered on the rising edge and on the falling edge. When the redstone turns on, it triggers one time to trigger the dispenser, and when the redstone turns off, it triggers the dispenser again. So this way we have a water on, state for the lever and a water off state for the lever. Now let's go on to the button. Now the funny thing is with the button is we just took the lever off here and we just put the button there and it does exactly what you want it to do. You push the button, redstone turns on, does a dispenser, but like what is what if this um, this particular flow of water was too short? Like what if you needed to flow down to collect a bunch of things from your farm. Well, let's make a pulse extender. So for this pulse extender, we're going to use some comparators. I'm going to use two comparators going this way and two comparators going this way. And then we'll just put some dust here and here. Oh, that just changed the state and collected the water. Um, let's just put a button real quick. Collect it. There we go. Now we'll put the button here. What will happen is the button will trigger the redstone. It'll go through the comparators. And the signal will keep getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker until finally the signal turns off again. And then we did see something. Get out of here, horse. There was one thing that I missed, which is kind of funny. You saw that the number's going down. We'll do it one more time. Look, it says 15, 13, 11, 9. And it's actually triggering a bunch of times. That's because the observer is noticing every time the signal strength changes. So we'll change this one, uh, this one piece of redstone for a repeater. So it'll all be, it'll just be on or off. And there we go. Water on, slowly going away, and the water is off with a little signal, um, what do you call it, a pulse extender. Now you can make this even longer by replacing one of the corners 
with a block. Like for example, this corner can be replaced with a block. And we can watch the numbers going 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. It's going to be twice as long now because every time the observer or the, the comparator, you know, it just passes on the signal and then here it's still, so it's the buttons right here puts out a 15 strength signal. It goes to the comparators at the same strength it receives to the block 15 strength signal here, still going through here, 15 strength 15, but then it gets back around here and then it's a 14 strength signal. And then it goes all the way around as a 14th strength signal. And then it gets out to here and it's a 13th strength signal. So then it starts decreasing as these guys go on. Without this block here, let's actually take it out again. That decrease happens twice. So it's to get 15 strength signal, 15, 14, and 14, 13. So that every time you see it go down by two over here. Anyway, that's a pulse extender. You can put a bunch of these comparators in a row or less of them with a block, without a block. But you get a nice pulse of water that eventually turns off. There we go. Some advanced basics is what I like to call it. Got the rising edge, got the falling edge for the spencers, but of course you can use it for piston doors. You can use it for any redstone contraption. It's just a concept. Use it where you want. Use it where it works. Alright, well guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope uh, you got a little smart today, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.